we really started off with the traditional Scotch approach. Um, and um, and really the first one that we launched was the Nabrachma. So it's a classic single malt whiskey. Uh, it's matured in a Portuguese red wine cask. And if you if you recall, Jim Swan invented a new cask treatment called Shave Toast Rechar. Yep. Yep. And and if time permitting, I'm happy to talk about the secret behind the success of that wood. Um, because Cavalan won goes best with that wood, Filipino Solo Spirit. Um, so this is our version of, if you like, of Vino Solo Spirit is the Nabraca. Classic single malt whiskey, no peat matured in a Portuguese Chito Shicha red wine. That was the first product that we did, starting off with classic single malts. So it's it's basically 100 person age in S, uh, STR uh, wine cask. Or it's a finish. Sorry, breaking up a little bit, say that again. So is it a finish or it's 100 person age in our STR wine cask? Oh, I see. I understand. Yes. Um, uh, all of our whiskies are 100% matured. Um, I, I'm not interested in finishing. Um, I think that's a bit of a shortcut. I want to have a full experience of that cask. So it's 100% matured in the Portuguese red wine. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, definitely a different product than the others then. So if you talked about the other unpeated, it's the uh, Anloy. Uh, yes, the Anloy. Uh, I'm, I'm quite, as a whiskey maker, I'm quite proud of the Anloy um, because I wanted to create, I was quite inspired by Japanese whiskies, which I think are more delicate, more nuanced, um, and more interesting um, for the connoisseurs. And so when I was designing the Anloy, uh, what I did was I brought together bourbon casks with classic single malt whiskey, together with all the Rosso casks, some uh, Pedro Jimenez casks, and also the Portuguese red wine casks. And I took over my wife's kitchen. That's my laboratory. Is my wife's kitchen. <laughs> um, and I would do. I would pull samples from those four casks and experiment with the ratios of the casks to find what I felt was the perfect balance with layers of complexity. Um, and so this is, it, it's, it's a delicate sherry whiskey and it has won a gold medal best in Canada at the World Whiskey Awards. That's the Anloy. Nice, nice. Uh, then you have uh, two peated whiskey also that we uh, we're going to have, the Dugol and the uh, Anaba. Yes, um, uh, so, um, <clears throat> I'm a, a great historian. I love the history of the Highlands of Scotland. When I'm not making whiskey, I study the Highlands of Scotland history, the clans, and how the clans of Scotland used to fight with the French against the English, right? Mm -hmm. We had the common enemy of the English between the French <laughs> and the Scottish clans. Anyway, it turns out that my seven great grandfather was an Elach. And an Elach is someone that's born and bred on Isla. Okay. And so now I have a good excuse that I am descended from Elachs. So I went back to Isla several times to study traditional peat smoking there. Um, because, and as you know, um, the only ones still smoking their barley on Isla are Lafroig, Omor, and Kilpoman. Mm -hmm. And I studied the peat smoking methods. And at some point, if we have time, I can show a quick video. Um, yeah, but sure. I brought that method back to Canada. And I talked to my cousin who is a farmer on the prairies and Canadian farmers are wonderful at building things for cheap. And because the Scottish are cheap and Canadian farmers are cheap, it was a great combination. <laughs> and and um, so I gave him all the designs for how to build a peat smoker. And so we are one of the few, I mean, there's only a handful in Scotland, right? Maybe five or six distilleries in Scotland who still uh, smoke their own barley. And we're the only one at a commercial scale internationally doing this. So it's a very rare occurrence for a distillery to smoke their own peat in the mm. traditional method. Um, and so with the Anaba, um, the Anaba, um, you see the great color. 
Um, it's all natural, non-chill filtered, all natural colour. Um, this Anaba, when I put it together, um, it's about a, a 15 ppm, um, so it's not a full peating level. I actually peat our barley to 54 ppm, okay? So all of our barley is done to 54 ppm, but when I built, when I created the Anaba, I brought together some unpeated whiskey together with the 54 ppm whiskey, um, and I wanted a delicate peating level, 15 ppm, then I wanted a delicate sherry, so the Oloroso and Pedro Jimenez are in balance with the with the um, with the uh, uh, with the bourbon casks, and I've also got some virgin oak in here, virgin American oak, okay. and I always find that the virgin oak balances beautifully with the phenols and the peat, right? So what we've got is an amazingly layered and complex whiskey here where the sherry and the peat are loved beautifully in balance. And then you've got the different oak contributions, including the virgin wood that brings a kind of a, enhances the maritime note, actually, Eric. Because we're on an island, we do have a natural maritime note um, uh, at the end of the palate. There's active salt even in, in many of our whiskies because we're on an island. And I find that the virgin wood seems to elevate the, the maritime note with those kind of pine, fresh pine notes that the virgin wood brings. So that's the Ann Abbott. It's very delicate, beautifully balanced. Yeah, and you're talking about the, the, the salty notes. When uh, when we taste that, um, the, the Quebec Whiskey Club two weeks ago, it was something that was brought by many people. We we feel the we, we felt the salt on our lips after so that it, it's really salty it's really it's uh, something special and so it brings me also in, in maybe 10 seconds all your warehouses uh, are near the distillery on the island that's what you uh, you have yes they're in this building and this building i could go <clears throat> one kilometer that direction one kilometer this direction uh, maybe about 16 kilometers that direction, you're surrounded by the ocean. When I drive into work in the morning, I can smell the ocean breeze. So, so yes, we are an island distillery, and the uh, whiskey is matured right here at the distillery. And so it, it, it uh, brings me uh, to another question. Maybe if we come back to the, the, the distillery foundation, why doing that on, on Vancouver Island when you can do that on on the mainland, let's say uh, in Vancouver area or something like that, would would it be easier for for uh, uh, let's say sales and, and and transports and everything? Why why on the island in Victoria? Um, Victoria reminds me of Scotland, um, and and sometimes I get homesick for the old country, um, and um, and and so I lived on the prairies for several decades. Um, and when I came out to Victoria, I, with the mountains, the ocean, um, the lakes, I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. Um, <laughs> it's so beautiful here. Um, now, it does have an advantage because on the island it helps the whiskey, um, but also the tourism is very good on the island. Um, and so we're actually the only distillery, I believe, in Canada who has Alaska cruise ships coming to the distillery. Um, so our tours are actually five-star tours. And if anyone wants to jump on a WestJet or Air Canada flight to come out and visit, you can be guaranteed a fantastic tour. Nice. OK, yeah, I understand. Yeah, so the the tourism aspect of, of that location is important also for, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so then um, if we go back to the whiskey, uh, the, the Ciel Dugo, uh, this one is more peated, so 27 ppm, if I'm right. Yes, that's right. So, so half of the casks are are half of the casks are peated to the 54 ppm, and half of the casks are unpeated. Um, and um, and shield Dougal, you pronounce it perfectly, Shield Dougal. Um, um, you know, I was talking to Billy Walker. Um, Seven, each year I go visit with Billy Walker when I'm back in Scotland. His daughter got married at my brother's restaurant. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> and, uh, and Billy's a good guy and he makes fantastic whiskey, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Um, and Spilly, uh, to me, Graham, you, you shouldn't be frightened to experiment with the virgin oak. Um, yes, it's very powerful. And yes, it makes, you know, bourbon, which is so wood forward, right? Um, but, you know, use carefully and it can be fantastic. And so when I put this this, this expression, Teal Dougal, together, I want to, and, and, and many of us connoisseurs love to see the house style presented in uh, bourbon wood, right? First use bourbon wood, it shows off the house style perfectly. Yeah. So really what, what this expression is, it's got, if I remember correctly, it's got about 10% Portuguese red wine. So a little bit of Portuguese red wine. Mm -hmm. All of the rest of it is American oak, right? First use bourbon um and 25 percent virgin wood and and when i was experimenting in my wife's kitchen with the mixology yeah. um basically i kept on increasing the virgin wood component because the 20 the, the 27 ppm kept good balance with, okay. the, with the, the virgin wood and i kept on going up and up and up and i found the magic point was 20 it was 25 percent virgin wood right so mm. this is all about the house style because there's very very little wine influence in it mm. um and i think it, i love it it's one of my favorites actually so yeah no it uh, it was one of the the favorite of the the group also when we tasted two weeks ago so yeah interesting so and then, you know, sorry go on no, I said we talked about the, the the Scottish products, but you decided also to to produce other type of whiskey. So being in Canada, then you can produce anything. So that that's probably why. Okay, let's let's do Irish whiskey as well. <laughs> that's what what why you yeah. yeah. Uh, um, what what well, what so, bring you to do this? Uh, well, it, uh, it's partly my passion for history. Um, you know, the Irish like to remind the Scots. The Irish will always remind the Scots, we gave you tartan, we gave you whiskey. And the Scots will say, yes, that's true, but we made them better. Right? <laughs> uh, and, and so, but it turns out that they also gave us the language. Right? The Scottish language, Gaelic, is Irish language. Yeah. And so many Highlanders like myself, um, actually centuries ago, actually migrated from Ireland, right? So it turns out I have Irish ancestors. Um, and so it was partly a nod to my Irish ancestry. But also when I was working with Jim Swan, Jim had always wanted to do an Irish distillery, but he didn't really get the proper chance to do that. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, let's take the Jim Swan method. Because remember, as I said, Jim just dialed in the, all the traditional Scottish steps and so as an homage, uh, in honor of, of, uh, of Jim, I thought, let's apply the Jim Swan method to a traditional Irish process. Mm -hmm. And to do that, I went back to Middleton Distillery, great whiskey maker in uh, Middleton with red breast, green spot, yellow spot, writer, um, sorry, well, yeah, writer's tears is right, made there too. Um, but um, uh, Powers John's Lane is a fantastic one. If you've not tried Powers John's Lane, it's an absolutely spectacular pot. Yeah. So I went there twice, did their academy, and twice I sat down with their master distiller one-on-one -on -one to make sure that I understood the detail, the nuances of the traditional Irish method. Brought that back to Canada. Then I overlaid the Jim Swan method doesn't change the traditional Irish approach, it just makes it better. Mm. Um, now with the triple, bit, and so the, the couple of differences that you'll know is with the pot still method, you've got unmalted barley, yep. right? Um, and so we have about 60% unmalted barley in our Kildara and our Kilae. Mm. And that's my fixed ratio, it's always 60% unmalted and 40% malted barley. Mm, yeah. The unmalted brings a creamy, biscuity, grain flavor to the to the whiskey. But then of course, the other difference is a triple distilled. So I've only got two pot stills. So what we do is we do the second distillation here and we do multiple second distillations, collect, collect the, yeah. the, the spirit, and then we charge that spirit back in 
for a third distillation. Taking the Jim Swan approach, I did a narrow cut, but now because the spirit comes on, triple pot still whiskey spirit will come on um, at about 84, 85% alcohol versus 75 for double distilled. Yeah. But trust me, I'm, I'm almost cutting it off before it's even started. That's how narrow the cut is on the triple because I wanted to accentuate the fruity esters, the floral notes, the fruity notes, and that's what you collect with that super narrow cut. The triple copper contact, three times copper contact, also makes it a very smooth and refined, incredibly approachable whiskey. Um, so, um, so yeah, so that's the, that, that was the background to, to the, the Irish approach. Yeah, Irish, yeah, nice, really nice. So uh, then the two products we're, we're going to have in the group is the Kildera and the uh, Kil Kilake. How do you pronounce that? Yeah, the Kilake, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Kildara, um, and there's a Kildara there. Um, um, yeah. So it's um, uh, Kildara means the church of the oak trees. And so I thought oak trees is so appropriate because, because of the whiskey, right? Yeah. Um, and my ancestors... Um, were involved with Kildara back in the, the 7th century, um, the year 700, actually. Um, so the Kildara, when I put this together, I always start off with the bourbon base, right, the bourbon cask base, because it provides a platform for any great whiskey. Um, and then I started to layer in some Oloroso, Pedro Jimenez, and, and interestingly, again, I put a small amount of virgin wood in this, right? I think it was 5% or 10%, I have to check. Um, uh, and just enough to give a, a fourth dimension, if you will. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, without overpowering, because Irish style whiskey is very delicate, right? Yeah. So you have to be careful with the wood treatment. Um, and I'm so proud of this because um, when we put it into the World Whiskey Awards in London, the most competitive awards on the planet, it was up against a 27-year-old red breast. It okay. was up against a 25, a 21-year-old red breast, a 15 red breast, and a 12 red breast. Irish distillers threw everything to defeat the Kildara. And this Kildara beat them all, right? <laughs> yeah. um, and and nice. it's not 12 years, it's a fraction of 12 years old. A yeah. fraction, right? Yeah, so it's, it's, it, it, This for me is a tribute to Jim Swan because the Jim Swan method applied to the Irish method had beat the best, the best of Ireland after yeah. just three or four years. Yeah, 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 no, absolutely, yeah. And uh, the Kilik, basically, you, you put another twist on it uh, with the, the Moscatel. That's that's the difference with the Kildera. Yeah, so the Kilay, um, and Kilay is just another Irish monastery where my ancestors were involved. At one okay. point, we were quite religious, but now we're a bunch of sheep shaggers, but you might not <laughs> want to reproduce them. Um, <laughs> and, um, and so uh, this is a tribute to my ancestors, my religious ancestors. Um, and um, the Moscatel is Portuguese. <laughs> Moscatel or Moscato, uh, Moscato wine, fortified Moscato wine, right, um, uh, um, from Portugal. And it's, and it's in, that, that Moscatel comes from a European oak cask. So it's Quercus Rober as opposed to Quercus Alba, right? Mm. Uh, so it's not American white oak, Quercus no. Alba. It's actually European oak, yeah. Quercus Rober. And that makes the, and, and so the Moscatel itself is, I think it's quite a delicate white wine sweet white wine and um, but the european oak is quite powerful and so i ended up only having 20 percent of the moscatel casks and then the rest of it is predominantly first juice bourbon wood um, and then a tiny little touch of virgin to add a fourth dimension right mm -hmm. um and uh, again this one a gold medal at the world whiskey awards and so for folks that really like to explore the wine influence i would really encourage them to to try the white wine moscatel because i think it's quite lovely and i would actually add eric if you mind me saying um as a whiskey maker uh, uh you know mike nicholson and myself 
we always enjoy the urban wood expressions because they, they, hold, they, they show off the house style of the distillery, right? Um, but what was interesting with this white wine is somehow the white wine, sweet white wine notes seem to accentuate the natural esters, the fruity esters that we have. So the white wine and the esters, um, they all lift up together. Um, and it just was a wonderful compliment um, to our house uh, having white wine there. Yeah. I've yeah. also got some Saturn wood there, and I can't wait for it to come to maturation as well for the French Saturn, because I think it'll be a great compliment to our fruity style as well.